Hi everybody. Today, this Ash Wednesday, we begin the season of Lent. And during these 40 days plus the Sundays leading up to Easter, we're going to focus on Jesus. Who He is, what He said, what He did, and what it all means. The series is simply called, This is Jesus. You know, when I consider my calling as a pastor, I could sum it up in one sentence. I want to introduce people to Jesus. That's what I'm passionate about. That's what I give my life to. I want to introduce, introduce people to Jesus and help them become his deep, daring, daily disciples. During the next six and a half weeks, we're going to get to know Jesus in a fresh way. We're going to walk together through Matthew's Gospel, this first century biography of Jesus. You know, it was written for people like you and me. Some of us are disciples. Some of us are just curious about him. And we're all learning as we go. The journey will be like a lot of important things. The more you put into it, the more you get out of it. And that's why we purchased copies of a devotional commentary written by a professor I know, Dr. Ben Witherington. This book has 40 daily readings. And so if you read one a day, every day except Sundays, you'll finish by Easter. Each reading is just two or three pages, and that includes the Bible passage. So five to ten minutes is all it takes. Personally, I'd much rather see you give up ten minutes a day learning about Jesus than give up chocolate. If you don't have a copy of Dr. Ben's book yet, you can pick one up at the vestibule just inside the outer doors of the west entrance of the church. So, my friends, today we begin. This is Jesus. In Matthew 3, John the baptizer makes this announcement. After me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. Then Jesus comes, asking John to baptize him. At first, John ob objects. He, he knows Jesus doesn't need to be cleansed from his sins. But Jesus says still, baptism is the right thing to do. Now, why does he say that? What's he talking about? On page 12 of the book, Dr. Ben says, Probably we are meant to think that Jesus is taking on the role of lost Israel here, who does indeed need to be cleansed. So Jesus, the righteous one, comes to identify with us sinners and to walk with us. And that's why he wants to be baptized. He's called to be light in a dark world a calling that Israel had not been able to live, live up to. In chapter 3 of Matthew's Gospel, all signs are pointing to Jesus. John the baptizer points to Jesus, saying he's so great that John's not worthy to carry his sandals. The prophets point to Jesus, saying that John comes to prepare the way for the Lord, and Jesus is the Lord. The Holy Spirit points to Jesus at his baptism, visibly descending on him and resting on him. The Heavenly Father points to Jesus with a voice from the sky saying, This is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. So, John the Baptizer, the Old Testament prophets, the Holy Spirit, the Heavenly Father, they all point to Jesus. He's the one we need to follow. He's the one who came to save us. He's the one worthy of our love and loyalty. He's the one who will judge us on the last day. Listen to him. Trust him. Imitate him. Learn from him. This is Jesus. He has flipped the script of this world. He has changed it forever. History is divided by his entrance. People everywhere of all kinds of faiths admire him. All too often, People claim the name of Jesus and then do the opposite of what he would do. We saw this on January 6th, didn't we? Some rioters carried Bibles. Some carried crosses. Some carried signs that said, Jesus saves. And then we saw them break into the Capitol building, destroying, desecrating, threatening. And yet, it's very easy to point the finger, isn't it? We, Jesus' people, have failed him over and over. History tells us that Christians are highly corruptible. And yet it also tells us that we are highly correctable. 
That's because Jesus does not abandon us. He is our good shepherd. He goes looking for his sheep when they wander off. This is Jesus. After his baptism, Jesus went into the rocky wilderness where he fasted for 40 days. Then he was tempted by Satan. And this is Jesus too. He walked the road we walk. He faced the temptations we faced. Yet he survived. Why? Because he knew the scriptures. And he knew who he was. God's beloved son. Up to this point, hardly anyone knew who Jesus was. But following his baptism and temptations, he went public. He began traveling throughout Galilee saying, Repent, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Or as it's phrased in Mark's gospel, The kingdom of heaven has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Today, we're offering drive through communion and the marking of ashes outside the church building at 4814 Oaks Lane. You can come between noon and 1 uh, or between 5.30 and 7 in the evening today. Uh, please use the Southern Drive on Oaks Lane to drive in. Uh, and That's near our Love and Learn daycare. And then pull up to the portico at the east entrance. First, someone will pray with you. And then pull up to the next spot, and you'll be marked with the ashes, receiving the words, repent and believe the good news. We'll be using long medical swabs to apply the ash, so we won't actually be touching you. Then you can pull up to the next spot and receive communion, and you can either open it right there and receive it in your car, or you can take it home. And it's all gluten-free. What do the ashes mean on Ash Wednesday? Well... Ashes are a symbol of mortality. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Ashes are a symbol also of repentance. As we grieve over our sins and put them away. The ashes marked on our foreheads will uh, be in the sign of a cross. To remind us that Jesus has come to take our place in death. And so the ashes are also a sign of hope. Let's pray. Jesus, we don't want to make up our own version of you. We want to know the real you. Please, will you take us on as your apprentices so that we can learn from you daily? Increase our curiosity. Deepen our hunger to know you. Be patient when we struggle to understand you. Give us courage to dare to follow you. Open our eyes to see you. Open our ears to hear you. Open our hearts to know you. In your name we pray. Amen.